morning, church. We're so grateful to be with you in the house of the Lord this morning. It's time to worship the Lord. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Can I hear an amen, worship team? Amen. Yes, we're excited. We are excited. We are excited to declare the goodness of our God. Let's just turn our eyes to him. Let's turn our attention to him this morning. Lord, we look to you. And we thank you for who you are. You are good and you are faithful. It is who you are. It's in your nature. And so we press in and we declare all that you are. We thank you for your goodness.
morning will you make some noise oh man before I met Jesus my life was a wreck and it was a mess and I thank God that when I allowed him to come into my heart and be my Savior and my Lord he broke me free from some things amen Woo, man, there's excitement in this place. I don't know if it's the joy of the Lord or the church coffee or both. I'm just kidding. I know it's the joy of the Lord. But uh, welcome to River City Church this morning. If you are visiting with us for the first time, pull this out in front of your chair back. We want to meet you. We want to hang out, grab some coffee, lunch, both. Coffee and lunch at the same time. Look at that novel idea. Uh, go ahead and uh, scan that QR code. Fill out some information. We'd love to stay in contact with you. Also, uh, children, will you come forward, please? Children. Give it up for the RCC kids. Look at Gabby. What's up, Gabby? Holly, why is your name tag upside down? Yo, it's upside down Sunday, right? Everyone wears their name tag upside down. Oh, awesome. Well, you'll notice our kids have these cute little barrels. They're called Buddy Barrels or Buddy the Barrel. Um, these are for our BGMC Boys Girls Missions Club. Um, we are a very missions-oriented church, and uh, we teach our kids at a young age how important it is to give to missions. So um, right now, our kids are... Our, uh, our, blah, 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 I can't English today, I'm sorry. Um, our kids are collecting their missions money, so right now they're going to go to you guys all throughout here. So go ahead and get any loose coins or dollar bills, and as the kids come around, they're going to uh, ask you to put something into their buddy barrel so they can give to missions. Amen? So kids, please be dismissed to go collect money from uh, our family here, and whoo! couple quick announcements while they do that. Tuesday nights, we have our um, our midweek service. We have youth group right in here, junior high, high school, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Um, so come and hang out. And then also we have men's and women's in our office area. We also have kids club as well. Uh, everything you need for your families here on Tuesday night, 6.30 to 8 o'clock. Also, if you are interested in becoming a volunteer at RCC, or if you just want to know more about the church, right after service, we have um, a starting point class in our office area which is just the next building over and uh, there's free food so i mean you had me at free food right john right 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 pastor john free food five minutes ago yes so yeah no i mean yeah we are so thrilled that you guys are here with us this morning we are so um excited to see what god has been doing these last couple of of weeks and the outpouring that's been taking place and um i'm going to ask that we just continue to open our hearts to Whatever the Lord wants to do in us, 
I'm going to have Pastor John pray, and then we're going to uh, dive right back into worship. Heavenly Father, we are so humbled by your grace and your mercies that are new every single morning, God. And we do sing hallelujah this morning because we are free. We are free indeed. We thank you for your blood that has covered us, that has given us life. The old is gone and the new is here. So, Father, help us to walk in this new victory, in this new covenant, Father God. And we just worship you this morning, Lord. And we just ask and we just hope and we pray that you are satisfied. That, Father, we could bring you glory, the glory that you deserve. That we would not keep any of that glory for ourselves this morning. Father, we do bring the things that we're struggling with to church and we lay it down at your feet but father right now i pray god that you would help us to have a moment a space where it's just you and me god that i can sing with sing to you freely without any distractions without any worry of what's going on around me not worrying about the person next to me but but just worshiping you like i do when i'm alone father when i'm shouting and i'm yelling lord So be glorified and be praised. We honor you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, rest in this place. Teach us how to be one with you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, rest in this place. Teach us how to be one with you. I yield my heart to you. I yield my heart to you. I yield my heart to you. You're my king. I yield my heart You are 
worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all.
Philippians chapter 3 today. It's been, um, man, what an incredible just few months it's been here at River City Church. And I, w- I was telling Shauna this week, I think that February, just if I look back on all the years of ministry, February was the best year of ministry we've just ever had um, personally and just in this church. Just God has been doing some great things. And you know what it really did? It it, it brought a high anticipation for March. And I, I have a high anticipation of what God wants to do in, in our church in this next In this next month, as we start a series, do the work. Everyone say, do the work to better your life and to further your faith. And I think everybody would say yes to those two things. Do you want to better your life? You might sit here and say, I've got a pretty good life, but every one of us want a better life. And I'm going to show you how, okay? Um, Further your faith by just being here today. You've already voted on that one, that you want to further your faith in in your life. And so we're going to talk about doing those two things, do the work, to, to better your life and to further your faith. If we're going to do this for four weeks, we're going to look at four things. I promise you they will no doubt change everything in your life if you'll, if you'll do these four things. So, so week one, do the work to know God deeply. Week number two, do the work to shake off your past. How many of you would say, man, it's nice when you can shake off your past, huh? And then third week, we're going to talk about do the work to, to get rid of, to break your stinking thinking. And some of you, you've got some of that in your life. So we're going to take care of that that week. And then week number four, do the work to set your life on a purposeful path. And I know all of you want to have purpose in your life and to live with, with purpose and destiny. So do the work. In September of 2022, we lost a good friend um, here at River City Church, someone that many of us were close to, Mark Binion. He's there in the middle And he was part of this church for many, many years, predating me. And he died suddenly of a heart attack on a a Saturday night. And um, Mark and Caroline had a pretty rough life. They, of drugs and abuse and betrayal and heartbreak. And then in 2000, the year 2000, a matter of fact, here at River City Church, um, they both came forward and gave their lives to Jesus. Is that awesome or what? I mean, praise the Lord for that. And um, so they gave their lives to Jesus. Um, and a lot, a lot changed it in that moment, but they still had some things that they struggled with. There were still some, some things they brought into to their pre-conversion life that they had to work out. I, I don't know about you, but I'm still in that place. I'm working some things out in my, in my life. And they brought some things in that they had to deal with. Now, this week, I did an interview with Caroline. I didn't want to do it um, live because then I have to do it three times, and it's a very emotional thing for her. She's still dealing with this. So we did it on video um, about how God really changed their life, uh, not at the moment of salvation alone, but from that moment until 2019. So I want to invite you to turn your your attention to the screens. A lot changed in Mark and Caroline's yes. life. Yes. I, I know, and your family. A lot, lot changed in that moment. But there were some things, and what we're going to talk about mm-hmm. today, there are some things that um, you guys still struggled with. Correct. Going into, you were saved. You're going to heaven, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But you still had some struggles from your past that you brought into salvation. Um, what were some of those struggles for Mark and for you guys? I think it was more so our marriage at the beginning with the combined family. Yeah. Um, and then me with my drug abuse. Yeah. Um, you know, all that, you know, combination of things. It was a turmoil from the beginning. Like, if, you know, we were yeah. still trying to work on things. We were seeking God before we got married. Yeah. And then after we got married, um, maybe the first two, three years were, you know, not good. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So there was, there was some drugs, still struggling with drug abuse. Um, so, and Mark had anger things he was dealing with, verbal, and you guys verbal would, abuse. verbal abuse, mm-hmm. your guys' marriage was just like that. Then you had a mixed family in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. You're trying to figure out how to, um, you know, work through different kids and a blended family. So just a lot of turmoil that you guys faced and, yes. and your marriage was hard yes. um, for a lot of, a lot of years. And so you came, you came to Jesus, but you still had all this stuff. And one of the things that um, you thought you were going to get choked up, I get a little <laughs> choked up, but one of the things that we always remember about Mark because he was quick to the altar. Jesus Mark Lord. was at the altar. Mm-hmm. He was at the altar. He loved the Lord. Yes. Um, he was always wanting people to pray for him, work through things with him. 
Um, and I, jokingly, I said to you, but there's a lot of truth in that. A lot of my first years here mm-hmm. as pastor, I did a lot of counseling with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so I, a lot of time with Mark and with Mark and Caroline working through some marriage things. And there was a struggle. Mm-hmm. But in 2019, everything changed. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark went to a conference, um, so was the God conference with the men here at the church. And the theme of the conference was what the theme of our series is right now, Do the Work. Mm-hmm. And something captured Mark's heart at that conference. And he came home from the conference and had a conversation with you. Tell us about that conversation. Well, he came home and he said that it was a really good conference and that there was a thing called DTW and that he was going to put that into our marriage because he he wanted it to work. Not only in our marriage, but in in the relationship with our kids. and he was determined, and, and I asked him, DTW, and he said that to do the work. I yeah. choose to love you, and I'm choosing to do the work. Yeah. Um, and he did. I mean, uh, in a lot of ways, you know, he put a lot of work into it, and, and it, it changed him yeah. tremendously. Um, yeah. And, it, and You're telling me how you guys you used to have a, a battle or something and then he would go his way yours you guys would end up in counseling or whatever but that changed because he was quick to apologize you're telling me about notes yeah he would leave notes around the house apologizing and you know doing things to to show me not just tell me anymore it was more you know putting more of an effort into it you know doing the footwork yeah yeah and with your kids too definitely um with philip and, and valencia yeah. you know um for a while that you know they had they bumped heads and stuff yeah. especially him and my daughter yeah but they were able he you know uh, really changed things around and, and they have the best relationship ever him yeah. and my son and philip yeah. you know yeah um, well he sure yeah at the end there the last few weeks i had conversations with him about valencia yeah. and how much he was enjoying valencia and he was right. buying her things <laughs> yeah. and just god redeemed yeah. that family unit mm-hmm. when mark really decided he was it wasn't just going to be an altar thing, but he was going to also do the work. Um, he also really got into the Word. Yeah. Um, he loved the Word of God. Definitely. Was in it. You were telling me that he would read it, and then... I would ask him to read it out loud. Yeah. Um, because reading is... It, I don't know that you comprehend it a lot by reading it. If I'm listening, then yeah. and taking notes, and it's... You know, I, I get it. Yeah. So he would read out loud, and, the, you know, we'd be laying in bed, and he would yeah. read the Word. Yeah. Reading the Word to you, and... Yeah praying over you and man just everything changed when mark decided that he was gonna um do the work and i was a little offended i thought you guys didn't like me anymore because in 2019 like i didn't have any more counseling appointments with him and so it like it changed so much like there was he he was just doing it and your guys's marriage um changed the last you guys had such an incredible three or four years yes, of marriage it was the best it was it was just an incredible time and thank the lord he gave you that yes i right. say I, I shared before with you about being one in christ when you get yeah. married and i got to experience that because he chose to do the work yeah no that's you know i i know what that meaning means now when yeah. you become yoked and as one when you become married yeah yeah, absolutely. So yeah. after the conference, Mark got a tattoo on him to yes. do the work <laughs> so that he could remind himself, you yeah. know, and then I, you, you showed me, you have a necklace yes. now that your kids got made to say, made, yeah. yeah, it says do the work DTW yeah. on it because um, it means so much to you. So since Mark's passed in September, I mean, you obviously you still, it's still a process, but you've, you've yeah. had a lot of healing. God's worked a lot in your life. What are some Definitely. things you've had to do in your life? Um, what's continuing that theme of your husband do the work what are some things you've had to do in your life the last few months continuously to seek god more yeah um and trying to read the daily scriptures and and, you know trying to seek him more because i need him yeah you know i can't i can't get i wasn't i wouldn't have been able to get through any of this without god in my life you know and then knowing how much my husband always used the work dtw so and i kept telling him i gotta do the work you know yeah absolutely her family will be watching this second service. Let's give her a big hand of appreciation for this in this interview. So do the work. You know what's cool? We have Pastor John Kim sitting here in the front, and Pastor John was part of the committee that chose this theme for that year, for that conference. He works at the district office. Do the work. And little did he know as you guys sat there and you, and you chose that theme, how deeply it would impact Mark 
from River City Church that it would change everything about his, his life just two years before, three years before his death. You know, I, I said in the interview, one of the things I loved about Mark is he was always quick to the altar. And many of you who have been on prayer teams have prayed for Mark. Every week when we had an altar, he was one of the first ones wanting you to pray for his family, wanting him to pray for his life. Let me tell you what changed for Mark at that conference in 2019. Mark decided that his prayer life and that his altar life would have to affect his everyday life. See, friends, there's a disconnect sometimes. We have an altar life on Sundays, and it's disconnected from our everyday life. Let, let me tell you something. Your, your time at this altar is the starting line, not the finish line for you. You need to, you need to be able to take that and move into a new seasons in, in life. What God does in you on a Sunday must play through you during the week. You must do the work. And that's why I want to talk about this. I feel it's a very important series to follow up our, our altar series. And, and I want to start by doing the work to know God deeply. Know God deeply. I don't know about you, but I want to have a deep, intimate, authentic, unshakable, unbreakable, dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ. I, I, don't, I don't want to have a shallow, wavering, mediocre, distant, weak relationship with God. But friends, in order to have that deep, intimate, authentic, unshakable, unbreakable, dynamic relationship and not a shallow, unwavering, mediocre, distant, weak relationship, my moment of encounter must translate to a life of pursuit. You've got to, the moments that you encounter God have to translate to something bigger in your life. And that is what is happening for Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. He has encountered God on the road to Damascus. He had an incredible encounter. He heard the voice of Jesus. He saw Jesus, and, and it was now translating into a life of pursuing God with his entire being. And, and Paul had an encounter, and now Paul is doing the work. And in Philippians 3, verse 7 is where we will be. There's a proclamation of relationship that happens, and he gives us some words that we're going to pull out out of this passage that help us see the work he brought to the relationship. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Sounds very inspiring, doesn't it? And count them as rubbish that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I might, what? Know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. There's five words I want us to look at. If you're taking notes, grab your pen and your paper now or grab your cell phone, whatever it is. There's five words that I believe give us a picture of the work that Paul brought to his relationship with Jesus Christ. The first word is count. Everyone say count. All of these words are verbs. It's our first verb we're going to look at today. It's to consider. It's to regard. It's like you're, you're sitting down and you consider something and you intentionally place it in a category of importance. Paul says, but what were gained to me, these I have now counted as loss for Christ. It would kind of be if my wife and I, we decided to buy a car. Like there's two ways we could go about it. It'd be we're driving around on a Saturday and we see a car and we're looking at it. We're like, we love that car. And we could just buy it. Or we could sit down and we could count the cost. We could sit down and we could look at our budget and we can do the math. And then after doing all the math, we could decide if it's a smart decision or a not a smart decision, how important it is that we actually buy the, the car. See, we added process, we added intentionality to the purchase of the vehicle. In the New Living Translation, it says this, I used to, Paul says, I used to think these things were valuable. They were in a different column. But now, when I recalculate, I consider them all worthless. See, Paul, he used to have a things that were in the valuable category for him. He valued authority. He was a, 
rabbi. He valued education. He had the best education available. He, he valued money. He had a high-paying government job. He valued re- religion. He was passionate about, about the law. But then something happened. Do you know what happened? Paul had an encounter with Jesus. And after he had an encounter for Jesus, with Jesus, do you know what he did? He sat down, and he pulled out his calculator, and he began to recalculate some things. See, he came to a different conclusion. All the things that were, were value to me, they are now worthless. They are now rubbish, garbage, refuse, trash, compared to knowing Jesus Christ. It's a decision that you make. And if you're going to do the work, you're going to have, have a deep relationship with Jesus Christ. You, sitting here today, you need to sit down and you need to recalculate what is the greatest value in your life. You need to recalculate the things that are, sure, I like nice things. I, I, I like to be comfortable. I like to do my thing. I like to be liked. I like to be popular. But when I sit down and I, and I do my time with the Lord and I get out my calculator and I start punching the numbers, all those things are far second to knowing Christ Jesus. Friends, you got you to gotta take the time. You got to consider. Some of you, you need to sit down and you need to reconsider the priorities of your life. You need to reconsider what is important to you, what you value, where you put your time as part of having a deeper relationship with Jesus. The second word, uh, also a verb, is, is suffer, to suffer loss, to suffer damage. Here, here Paul takes this beyond a, a mental exercise of calculating to a daily reality. He says this in verse 8, I have suffered the loss of all things. See, Paul had suffered. He'd been kidnapped. He'd been beaten. He'd been threatened. He'd been arrested. He'd been interrogated, mocked, ignored, shipwrecked, lost at sea, snake bitten. And at the end of the day, Paul was beheaded. The disciples suffered. Paul or Peter was crucified upside down. Thomas was speared. Matthew was stabbed. James was stoned. These men, they suffered for Christ. Yet we in the 21st century America, we want to quit when someone looks at us wrong. We want to, we want to give up when, when somebody hurts our feelings. Our, our, our church and our, our Christian faith has, has become weak. Friends, I want you to hear me today. The church, I love the church of Jesus Christ. The church is a lighthouse in our nation. We are a moral authority, and we need to stand for what is right. And friends, when you stand for what is right, you will be treated wrong. And Paul says, I have suffered. Friends, if you are going to grow in your faith, you've got to embrace suffering in your life. Can I play hardball? Can I hurt your feelings for a second? I I might hurt someone's feelings right now, okay? How about if the American church mustered up as much commitment to the word of God and to Jesus as we did politician and ideologies over the last three years? What What if we put as much courage into our proclamation as our faith as a political, as we do a political party? What if we... We had some willingness to suffer, do the work. Listen, if you're going to have a deep relationship with Jesus Christ, you must be willing to pay the price. You must be willing to suffer. And friends, it's not going to get easier to serve the Lord in this nation. It's going to get harder. And you, we've read the end of the book. We win, but there's some suffering between now and then. And we as Christians, we need to get, we need to get ourselves a backbone. And we need to stand for what is right. The next thing, the word faith. Some of you are going to fact check me right now, and you're Googling that, and it says noun. When you Google it, I say that the dictionary is wrong. This is a verb, because faith is not something that exists without the person of faith activating it in their lives. You've got to have some action to your faith. You have to activate faith. Faith is to see something that you do not see. It's to see something you do not see. It's to trust something you cannot quantify, you cannot reason, you cannot calculate. In Philippians, Paul says in verse 9, that which is through faith in Jesus Christ. You know, oftentimes in the church, when we think faith, we think I have faith for something. I have faith for my healing. I have faith for more money so I can pay that bill. I have faith for that new, that new job. I have faith for my marriage. Friends, that is the most shallow view of faith. You don't have faith for something. You have faith in something. Yeah. And you've got to go beyond. Friends, we're not talking just, oh, I have faith for God to do something. How about if God never do, does it? Do you have faith in it? Do you have faith in the middle of it? Do you have faith if you are healthy or you are sick? Do you have faith if you are rich or you are poor? 
Do you have faith in the valleys and the mountaintops? Do you have faith in Christ? We have to have our eyes on, on him, a trust that no matter what, what happens in my life, he's got this. See, faith is the big picture of who God is. It's absolute trust. It's unwavering trust. Friends, faith is not a magic wand that gets you what you want. Faith is a stance. Faith is a position that you will trust him no matter what. If, do the work. If you're going to have a deep relationship with Jesus Christ, you have to have a deep trust in Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I would say this. I would say this. The deeper the trust, the deeper the relationship. If you want to grow your relationship, you need to grow your faith in, in him. Faith, faith in him, absolute trust. Now we get to the good part of the sermon. I preached the rest so that I could do this part right here, okay? All right, the next word, no. Everyone say no. No, also uh, a verb. Now, a lot of times in the Greek, um, the word doesn't matter. It's just a word. But there are times that, that the word matters. And there's, there's two words for, that Paul could have used here for, for no. The first one is dita. And dita is like, I know about you. Okay, this word is used almost 400 times in the New Testament. So I know some facts about you. I know things about you. I've read an autobiography or a biography on you, so I know a lot. It's dita. I dita you. I know you. But there's a second word in the Greek that could be used here, and it's gnosko. And that word gnosko, it means to know intimately. It means to know personally. It needs to know deeply. See, I can know a lot of things about Stephanie here, but when I sit down and I spend time with Stephanie, guess what? I get to know her in a new level. Friends, a lot of times we know a lot of facts about God, but do we really know God? And we have Paul here, and do you know what Paul's saying? I want you to think about this. Sometimes you got to step back, you got to think. Paul is probably the most spiritual man alive at the time. Paul probably knows God better than anyone else knows God. And even in that place in his life, what is the cry of Paul's heart? I want to know yeah. him. Why? Because there's always more friends. And you, if you're going to follow Jesus Christ, if you're going to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you've always got to be drawing closer to Jesus Christ. I, I've told you my... Um, my mom gave me a Mercedes. It's a 1989 Mercedes. My grandma bought it, and then when my grandma died, my mom drove it, and then my mom stopped driving, so she um, didn't want her own car, so she, she gave it to me. When she gave it to me, she said, like, she told me, hey, I'm giving you this car, but I put some of your stuff in it, okay? How many of you know, I'm like 43 years old, and I still have stuff in my parents' house, okay? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I, I put some stuff in it, okay? So I, this week, it's been in there for a long time. I started going through the stuff, and I found a couple pictures, if you'll put those up here for me. Okay, who is that? That is me and my wife, Shauna. Now, this is the day, I found these pictures. I hadn't seen them in years. I, this is the day we got engaged, okay? Now, if you, thank you. Um, <laughs> now, you remember back then, we didn't have, um, we didn't have cameras on our phones, right? And so I went out that day, I bought the ring, and I bought a Kodak disposable camera, all right? And, and I took these pictures. She didn't know I was going to propose to her at, at this point yet. The, first, the picture on the right, she didn't know. The picture on the left, she did. I, I took these pictures of her. Now, me and Shauna, we went to the same, we went to the same um, college, and I knew Shauna. I knew facts about Shauna. I knew her dad was a firefighter. I knew she was from the state of Washington. Um, I knew she was a good person. I knew she, what church she went to. I know, knew a lot of facts about her, but that was the end of it. Well, one day, see, I, I this, I, I did that, Shauna, right? That, that, was the, that was our relationship. Um, one day, we were up playing football because I was on our football team for our floor and um, for our dorm floor. And we were playing football, and one of the guys on our, door, on, our floor, on our floor, his name was Timoteo. He broke his arm, okay? So he breaks his arm, and I go to help him, and we're talking to him, and he's like, we got to take him to the hospital. I didn't bring my car that day because I walked up there. So I turned around. There was hundreds of people, um, and I said, who will take me to the hospital with Timoteo? Well, everyone knew, well, this is going to take me all day, so no one wanted to do it. Well, Shauna stood up and said, I'll take you. I'll take you. Best decision she ever made in her life. <laughs> Best decision. <laughs> right, Amy? Amy's a Manny back there. <laughs> so we went to the hospital, and we spent the, the whole day in the waiting room of the hospital, and we talked. And I went beyond some simple facts to knowing the heart of Shauna. 
Now, let me ask you something. You, you take a guess. Do you think that that ended that day? And I'm like, I know her now. I can know her now. Well, no, it did not end that day. It has been a process for 20 years. I'm still learning about my wife. I'm telling you something here today. Nobody in this room and nobody else in the world knows Shauna as well as I do, yet I'm still learning about her. It is a lifelong, someone hear me today, pursuit. Yeah. And Paul, he says this. He says, listen, I want to gnosko. I want to know intimately. This is a lifelong pursuit, yeah. friends. And if you are going to have a deep relationship with Jesus Christ, if you're going to have an enduring relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to have a lifelong pursuit to just to know him more. You've got to do the work. It's got to go beyond belief systems. It's got to go beyond mental exercises. It's got to go beyond church attendance alone. You've got to do the work to know him deeply. You've got to take the time. You've got to put in the effort. The, la the last one, okay. I like, I like this one a lot. This is another verb, conform. Everyone say conform, okay. This is another verb, and this is, this is so cool. This is an important, I think, an important theological word here for you to learn, okay. This word, it starts with an S-Y-M. There's three parts to this word. We'll get into that. It starts with an S-Y-M, sim. Okay, this is the only place in the entire Bible that this word is used. So whenever that happens, it's an important word. And sometimes it's hard for us to figure out. We have to do a lot of work to figure out exactly what the word means. So there's this word, it starts with sim. Now this word does appear other places in the New Testament, but it begins with S-Y-N and not S-Y-M. So it appears in other places with one little difference. Now this is a huge difference, the sim or sin. Okay, sin, like it places in, appears in other parts of the Bible, is like taking one thing, okay, I got my plate out here, and I lost all my pens, great, and it's like taking it and putting it inside of an other thing, okay, so it's, or putting it next to, so that's what the word means, to take it like that and to put it, now, when we think about Jesus being part of our lives, we think we ask him into our heart, he occupies this part in our life, but friends, it's a lot more than that. The word sin, it takes it to an, uh, the sim, it takes it to an other level. It's like doing this, okay, with the Play-Doh. You do this. What happens when you do this with the Play-Doh? It's no longer separate. It's no longer two parts. It's not one part abiding in another part. Do you know what happens? They begin to mix. They become, become one. They consume each other. Look at the colors start to change. Everything starts to change about it because the DNA, the fabrics of it start to mix with each other. Friends, listen, listen. when we ask Jesus into our heart, he doesn't occupy right here. He occupies all of who you are. The Holy Spirit occupies. Listen, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells in you, not in a little portion. He dwells in all of you, every fabric of who you are. And then the next part of this word, oh, this, you guys know what this part means, okay? Sim morph. What does morph mean? It means to make something slowly into something else. What is the Holy Spirit doing in you? Worship team, you can come on up. He's working to make you like who? Jesus Christ. He's at work, not just an observer, not just next to you, coaching you. He is part of you, and he is forming you. He's morphing you into the image of Jesus Christ. I want to be conformed to his image. How many of you know this is a lot of work, isn't it? How many of you know that he's, he's at work in us and, and through us? And, and this is cool. I, I love this about the Greek, too. By the way, I got like an F in Greek in college, okay? <laughs> So don't listen to me. I'm just kidding. The ending in Greek is very important, and it ends with I-Z-O there. I-Z-O, it, it, it determines what the verb, what it is. What kind of word is it? Well, the I-Z-O there, it makes it an action verb, and it makes it present tense. Friends, listen. We got Paul talking here, okay? And Paul's saying, look, the most spiritual man alive on the face of the earth. And he's saying, God is still doing this. This is a present tense type thing happening in my life. Friends, I want you to hear me today. In the good seasons of your life, God is. In the bad seasons of your life, God is. Friends, when you are brand new, saved, and you're first in church, God starts to form you. When you've been there 10 years, he's still forming you. 20 years, he's still forming you. 50 years, he's still forming you into the image of his son. It does not stop in your life. 
every season, every place God is at work, but it isn't through suggestion, it isn't through him partnering with you on the outside. He is part in your heart. He is in every fabric of your life, and he's forming you. Friends, Father God, through, hear me today, Father God, through, everyone say through, Father God, through the Holy Spirit, is he's conforming you, he's morphing you to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Father God is at work in you. The question is, will you fight it? The question is, will you partner and do the work or will you fight the work? That's the question you have to answer today. I'm, I'm gonna invite you to stand. Father God, through the Holy Spirit, friends, is conforming you. He's morphing you. <laughs> some of you have been through some stuff in your life. In that, friends, God was conforming. He was morphing. He was changing you. He's partnered with you, every fabric of your life. He's making you into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to close your eyes today, and I ask you the question, will you allow him, will you allow him to do this work in your life? Will you allow him to make you more like Jesus? Will you allow him to, to form you, to change you, Will you allow the Holy Spirit's work in your life? With every eye closed today, come on, I, I think for me, my hands will be the first to go up. If you'd say yes to the work of God in your deepest of your hearts and to the work of the Holy Spirit, will you just lift your hands? Come on, maybe someone here, you're not even saved yet, but you know you need to respond. We're just lifting our hands and say yes to God. Yes to God and what you want to do in my life. I'm so far from where I need to be. Bible tells us that one day we will be like him for we will see him as he is until then friends until then you're a work in progress yeah. you're a work in progress right now this is what I want to do we've been talking about the altar we're going to spend some moments I'm going to open the altar today I want to ask you to go to a deeper place with God today that good no go that that cry of your heart would be met by the actions of your life today and to seek after him we're going to spend a few minutes in worship the altar's open if you want to go on your knees where you're at if you want to sit down if you want to just get out of your your seat if you want to stay in your seat whatever you need to do to get in the presence of god today because the holy spirit wants to fall today in your life to conform you into the image of jesus christ we say yes to that today jesus we say yes to that we say yes to what you want to do in our life lord jesus
time. Just let the Holy Spirit touch your life today. Fill every fiber of your being. Just open up your heart and your life to the work of the Holy Spirit. spirit in our in our lives the work is yes to the the question will you do the work to go deeper god is our heart cry to not just know the facts but to know you god our answer is yes to you our answer is yes to you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus amen let's give the lord praise today god is good Praise the Lord. It's just cool. I, I love when God God touches us in a lot of different levels, but I love when it's a really deep thing. And today was a really deep thing in the life of our congregation and in your life. And I want to encourage you to go away now and do the work. Amen. Now go do the work. The giving, by the way, you can start doing the work by giving. And the giving stations are on your way out and in the back there. God bless you. Those that are here for starting point with me, it starts in about five, six minutes. We might start a few minutes late in the Life Center so you can make your way over there. God bless you. Thank you for being here today.